Hi there, welcome to my talk, Car Brand Mix-Up Attack, bypassing the print in non-visa cars by using them for visa transactions. My name is Jorge Toro, and this is joint work with David Basin and Ralph Sasse. We are researchers at ETH Zurich. This talk is gonna be split into three parts. First, I'm gonna be talking about the EMV standard itself, and then I'm gonna be summarizing some of the results that we obtained after our formal analysis. Then I will be uh, describing the attack that we have discovered, as well as the countermeasures to it. Uh, finally, I will be giving the conclusive remarks. What's EMV? EMV, or also known as chip and pin, is the International Protocol Standard for Smart Card Payments. It was founded by Europay, Mastercard and Visa, and later some other card networks joined too. There are currently more than 9 billion EMV cards in circulation worldwide, and one of the reasons for which the standard has been so widely adopted is attributed to its advertised security. What's EMV security? The primary goal of EMV security is to protect cardholders. Namely, high-value purchases should be protected by a PIN. In this work, as well as in our previous work, we show that this is not the case, namely that criminals can bypass this PIN verification process and therefore violate the fundamental security goal of the standard. Uh, a fundamental part of the EMV transaction that is very relevant for this work is the online authorization and routing. Online authorization is the process by which the merchant gets a particular transaction authorized or declined by the card issuer. Routing is the mechanism by which the terminal uh, selects the payment network to which the transaction authorization request is going to be sent to. But what card data does the merchant use to determine the payment network? This could be, so the payment network can be inferred from the application identifier or from the primary account number. Application identifier is a data object sent from the card to the terminal in response to the select command. And this data object indicates the application that the, applications, the, application that the card supports. The primary account number is what is known as the card, credit card number or simply the card number. But why multiple choices? Do they always even indicate the same payment network? It turns out that this ambiguity slash redundancy is what um, leads to the attack that we report in this work. The contributions of this work are the following. We have extended our Tomari model of EMV to account for different routing choices. In particular, we develop a model that uh, considers pan based routing, so it's basically a routing mechanism by which the merchant chooses the, the uh, payment network looking, uh, by looking at the PAN, at the credit card number, right? And this model permits transactions where the merchant and the issuer don't particularly agree on the car brand. Uh, we identified uh, what we call car brand mix-up attack, which is an attack where basically the attacker induces a mismatch on, between the issuer and the merchant. Um, on what they see, on what they think the car brand is, right? And this, in combination with our previous attack on Visa cards, leads to a pin bypass for non-Visa cards as well. We also develop an Android app and build a proof of concept implementation of the attack and uh, and use it to 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 exploit, to carry out an exploit of, of this uh, car brand mix-up in practice, in real world. And we did so and bypassed the pin for a transaction of over 400 US dollars with a Maestro card. We disclosed this problem to MasterCard and after a successful disclosure process, they deployed uh, defense mechanisms at their network level. So let's get into the the actual attack and the countermeasures. Um, this table shows uh, our results, our results for the analysis of EMV when we consider AID-based routing. So basically, uh, this is a routing scheme where the terminal uh, chooses a payment network based on the AID, on the application identifier received from the card, right? So this is the classical way of looking at the routing schemes. Um, 
in the I want you to pay particular attention to the third column, which refers to a property that we call authentication to the issuer, and see here that um, this color this property checks out for all Mastercard transactions, which means that for every transaction that uses this AID based routing, the issuer has the assurance that they agree with the terminal on the card brand, basically on, on a card being a MasterCard, right? Now, if we consider PAN-based routing, it is the case that the attacker can induce a mismatch on the brand of the card. Basically, uh, the attacker can have the terminal thing that the card being used is a visa, whereas in reality it's a MasterCard card. How did we weaponize this? Um, we built an Android app, as I said before, that mounts a man in the middle attack on top of a relay attack architecture. As such, we employed two Android phones. One of them is being held near the victim's card. Let's assume this is a MasterCard card, right? And the other phone is held near the payment terminal. So we're just trying to steal money out of the MasterCard card, right? And these two phones communicate over uh, Wi-Fi, for example. Uh, in the first uh, message of the execution of the transaction, right? So the terminal sends a select command. Remember when I mentioned early on, when I talk about the routing schemes and so on, I mentioned that the application identifier is sent from the card to terminal response to the select command. Well, this is a select command that basically asks the card to, to say which applications it supports, right? Uh, because it's a MasterCard card, it will send back a response saying, I am a, Master, a MasterCard card, right? Here, the attacker simply replaces the response with, I am a Visa card. Uh, this looks super simple here, but it's not that simple in reality, especially because from this point on, the actual attack is uh, continuous in two simultaneous sessions one of them between the attacker and the terminal running the Visa protocol, and the other one between the attacker and the guy running the MasterCard protocol. At the point of cardholder verification, we apply our previous uh, pin bypass attack that we recently uh, disclosed. And uh, in doing so, we end up having an attack bypassing the pin for non-Visa cards as well. This is how the attack looks like. The attack looks like in technical detail. I won't be getting into uh, all these details here, but um, just know that uh, it is possible to construct all the messages uh, specified by the Visa protocol from messages produced by a MasterCard card. Okay, so let's watch a demo now. Um, so let's get let's try to fix this, right? So um, we first verify that the, our countermeasures to the pin bypass on Visa do work here as well. So they do prevent the Mastercard Visa brand mix-up attack. And without getting into uh, into details here, I can say that this is because our countermeasure to the pin bypass on Visa makes the terminal expect a signature that is not that is not just not possible to be produced by a MasterCard card. And uh, this is something, something related to a particular byte that is included in the signature that is never used by a MasterCard uh, card. You can check the details in the paper. Um, we also propose much in checked fixes that MasterCard can deploy on their own kernel without having to rely on business defenses, right? Uh, nevertheless, MasterCard implemented their own defenses at network level, which we experimentally confirm as effective against our brand mix-up attack. So how do we do this? Well, they basically, so we, in collaboration with MasterCard, ran a, an experiment of our attack now with their mechanism, with their defense mechanisms in place. And in this, this time it failed. So the attack wasn't successful. Okay, conclusions of this work. Um, systems must be verified as a whole and not by parts separately. 
This is because um, even though you, when you verify particular parts of the system, right? Once you put them together, you might run into uh, insecure executions. Uh, ambiguity and redundancy should be avoided in system specification. And we saw, for example, that critical mechanisms like routing were underspecified by EMV, therefore leading to this, uh, to this attack. And formal verification is a must nowadays because we as humans cannot possibly uh, deal with the full execution space that a complex system might have. All right, so you're welcome to visit our webpage where we have details about this work as well as uh, details on, on our previous pin bypass. And thank you very much for your attention and I hope you enjoyed the talk. <laughs>